Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I wanna to share with you 27 pieces of life advice. So this is a little bit different from my normal videos, but I just realized I'm 27 years old. I've actually accumulated quite a lot of wisdom, and I'd love to share that with you. So normally I'm sharing things about health, and there are plenty of health-related things in this list, but there are a lot of other things that I've learned that I would really love to share with you. Things that would have been really, really helpful for me if I'd known them three, four, five, ten years ago. So my first piece of advice is get married. Now you might be thinking, wow, that's a really big one, a really big one to start. And I've really tried to give you a good variety here. Some of these are really big, some of these are really small, most of them very practical. So yeah, get married. I really think that choosing a human being that you are gonna commit to and you're gonna say, you're my person, I'm gonna show you all of these parts of myself, I'm gonna become a better version of myself with you and for you and have a really nice chunk of stability in your life it could be really, really helpful. I see that life is kind of split into three main categories of health, wealth, and relationships. And the more stability that you can have in these areas, the more solid your life is gonna be. So the best way you can have stability in your relationships is pick a partner and commit to them. You develop so many different skills when you're in long-term relationships, communication, how to relate to other people, how to cohabit and how to live with somebody. I will say though, it's really important that you choose the right person and you have to make sure that you're compatible. Compatible meaning you have similar life goals, you wanna do similar things like for example my wife and I we both love to travel we both want to have kids we both like talking about similar things we think in a very similar way so I'm not saying just marry like the next random person that you see on the street pick the right person but if you're in a committed relationship really consider getting married and I was one of those people that said getting married is like it's a piece of paper I don't care it doesn't mean anything don't want to get the government involved my life really changed when I got married it isn't just a piece of paper it really changes the energy it really changes the dynamic my second piece of life advice would be to get in shape so if you're able to get in shape at least once in your life especially if you do this in your early 20s it's so much easier to stay in shape throughout your life unfortunately i had chronic health problems and it wasn't really feasible for me and maybe you're watching this maybe you're a little bit older than that maybe the ship has already sailed but still get in shape anyway having more skeletal muscle mass and a lower body fat percentage is directly correlated with a whole bunch of different things including cardiovascular disease even neurodegenerative disorders like alzheimer's and dementia if you have more muscle mass as a man you're going to have more testosterone and more muscle mass in general for men and women is one of the best ways you can improve your insulin sensitivity to protect you from things like diabetes. Number three on the list is to travel and especially to leave your hometown. So I would, so this kind of splits in two. First of all, I would encourage you to travel to as many different places in the world that you can. If you're from the Western world, definitely experience areas in Asia. Go to Korea, go to Thailand, go to Indonesia, go to India. It will completely change the way that you see the world because it is a completely different world. And I also really encourage you to leave your hometown. I find that hometown towns can be slightly restrictive. They make you almost stay stuck as a version of yourself that you've been. You have people that expect things from you. You have people that expect you to be the way you've always been and it can really stop you evolving as a person. I really think one of the best things I ever did was leave my home country because it's really allowed me to push my comfort zone. You know, I do a lot of things that aren't really very normal and I think I would have really struggled to do this if I was trying to do it in the environment where I'd been raised. Also, I think it's kind of funny that some people, and if this is you, then that's fine, but I just think it's kind of funny that we are born Born in a certain location and then we we have friends from going to school or something and we stay friends with them for the rest of our lives whether we're actually really that compatible with them or not just because we were born in the same kind of place i just think that's quite funny considering there's like nearly 8 billion people on this earth and we stay with the same maybe 5 10 or 15 people that we met just because we were geographically close to each other when we were born my fourth tip is to buy an aqua pick so this is a piece of dental care equipment i really think that the aqua pick is superior to brushing your teeth in almost every single way when we're brushing our teeth one of the most important things things is to remove debris from in between the teeth and the gum. This is what causes gingivitis. This is what causes poor dental health. This can cause a lot of bad breath, can cause a lot of different types of problems. An aqua pick is basically like flossing using water. So we're able to really deeply clean out these spaces in between our teeth and it's reusable it's just water it is amazing ever since i've used an aquapic i have i've never looked back i really think it's one of the coolest little gadgets that i've ever bought fifth point kind of connected to number four is that toothpaste is a scam now whilst i still brush my teeth i do think the aquapic is better but brushing your teeth can be nice for cleaning the actual teeth themselves getting the biofilms and things like that off and the plaque and the tartar and things like that but you really don't need to use toothpaste most toothpaste are filled with a bunch of different chemicals that you really shouldn't be putting inside of your body and even even the more natural ones i really think they're just a nice way of spending a bit of money on something that does almost effectively nothing i personally have fantastic oral health i've had two tiny tiny fillings and i don't use toothpaste i use an aqua pick and i brush my teeth that's it number six is learn about trauma so what i really mean by this is learn about how trauma works how trauma happens how trauma influences people's lives and how it's affecting your life because every single person has trauma and they either know what it is 
or they don't. So if you don't know what your trauma is, you're basically living on this computer program that is going to determine your fate. Trauma is caused by anything that causes us to experience an emotion that exceeds our emotional capacity. Anything that happens too quickly or is too overwhelming, we aren't able to process and digest the experiences, they are traumatic. So the thing about trauma is it causes us to develop an understanding of how the world works and who we are and how we fit in it. And if as a consequence of this trauma, we then develop beliefs that don't serve us, you will show up differently in your life in a very negative way. Trauma is connected to all different types of things from physical health problems, anxiety, depression, not achieving the life of your dreams, not being able to expand your comfort zone, not being able to ask for that raise, people pleasing, codependency, a whole bunch of different things. So look into it, learn about it, figure out how it works and figure out how it's affecting you because I guarantee you it is, you just need to figure out how. Number seven is start your own business. I really think starting my own business is one of the best things I ever did. I've learned so much about money. I've learned so much about how the world works. It's enabled me to become a person that's able to help a lot of people. It's given me a lot of purpose, a lot of reason. It's been a really nice way for me to make money and support myself and now my family as well. I think some people do dream of being an entrepreneur one day or running their own business and it is a magical experience but it's hard. It's definitely not for everyone. There's a lot of uncertainty involved. There's a lot of responsibility that you have to take. You know, you know, if something goes wrong, it's basically your responsibility to take care of it. It's not just like a nine to five job where you can show up, do your best, whether it's good enough or not, it doesn't really matter. You still get paid at the end of the day. When you run your own business, everything that happens is your responsibility, which is hard, but it's really great if you want to develop, become a more well-rounded person and become a better human being in general. Number eight is to value skills over certificates. This is kind of what people are talking about when they say people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs didn't really have any qualifications, but look how rich they are. The reason that they have the money that they do is they develop skill sets that are very valuable that allowed them to charge a lot of money for solving certain problems. So if you're able to develop skills that make you more useful to other people, people will be more willing to pay you money so you can help them solve their problems. The analogy I like to use here is if you're going to climb up Mount Everest, do you want someone that's done a lot of research about it? Or do you want someone that's done it a thousand times? You want the person that's already climbed up the mountain a thousand times because he knows exactly how it works. He knows about the temperature. He knows about the oxygen levels. He knows all the shortcuts. This is what's really valuable. And this is what people really want. So don't get too caught up on the certificates, the qualifications. And if you're doing them because you love it and, and you want to, then great. But I see a lot of people spend their whole life getting education and qualifications and certificates, and then not really using them to the fullest potential because they don't have the skill sets they actually need. I can remember I studied business in GCSE at at high school and it's probably the most useless qualification that I ever got because there's not a single thing I learned in that that actually practically applied to running a business in the real world. So forget the certificates, they're really not that valuable. Develop your skill sets instead. Number nine, and this is a prediction, gut health will change the world. I've done enough research by now and I've worked with enough people to have seen the effects that people's gut health has on the other aspects of their body, including their mental health, their digestion, obviously, cardiovascular health, cognition. Almost every single aspect of health is impacted by what's going on in the gut. And I guarantee you over the next 20 or 30 years, we're going to look at all the antibiotics that has been prescribed, the diets that we're eating, and we're going to be thinking, what the hell are we doing? So get ahead of the curve, learn about gut health, figure out how your digestive system works, learn about what the microbiome is, what microflora is, because I promise you, this is information that is going to be extremely valuable to you in your life. Number 10, learn polarized communication. Now this is quite a funny one, and it might polarize the audience a little bit. So the idea behind polarized communication is that men and women, masculine and feminine, and energy are fundamentally different. It's not that one is better and that one is worse. They are just different. You can think about this like the difference between hot and cold. It's like, what's better, hot and cold? Well, it's contextual and it depends. And it's not that one is better and one's worse. They're just different. It's like, what's better, up or down? What's better, left or right? Doesn't make sense. Asking what one's better, it just is illogical because it doesn't make any sense. And the same is true with masculine and feminine energy. But the key here is to understand that masculine and feminine energy communicate in different ways. Masculine energy communicates more directly and it communicates in directives and judgments. So this looks more like telling somebody what to do. This would also include the dynamic when imagine you go to see the doctor. He's going to tell you everything that's going on with you. He's going to tell you his version of your situation as he sees it. And then you're going to buy into what he is saying. Feminine energy communicates in a completely different way. It uses language completely differently. The example that I use, and I see this all the time, is when, for example, in a relationship, when a wife goes to the husband or a girlfriend goes to the boyfriend and says, do you even love me anymore? Leave me a little comment below if you've said this or if your partner has said this to you. So this is a feminine energy communication. And what the feminine energy is actually trying to say is, I feel really unloved right now. It's not practically asking, do you even love me anymore? The words aren't what's important. It's the energy behind them. It's about 
feeling the energy behind the statement. You see this also again in relationships when a couple are trying to decide what to eat and the man says, what do you want? And the woman says, I don't care, you choose. This is a really good example of, again, masculine energy making decisions and feminine energy wanting to be led. I absolutely guarantee you, if you have problems in any of your relationships, if you can learn to use polarized communication, you can fix these problems. If a woman tries to tell a man what to do in masculine energy, not only will he not do it, he will be repulsed by that woman. And if a man is trying to communicate to a woman using feminine energy, he will come off as very weak with no backbone and there'll be absolutely no attraction in that relationship either. It's a big rabbit hole to jump into, but I assure you it is more than worth it. Number 11, avoid synthetic clothes. So many of the clothes that are available in modern supermarkets and clothing stores actually made of synthetic materials. So you'd be thinking about things like nylon and polyester. These are basically plastics. And the thing is, the clothes that have the most of these compounds in are normally things like sportswear. The thing is, when you're wearing sportswear, you're getting hot and you're sweating, and this causes these plastic compounds in the clothing to leach into your body. This is especially harmful for women, especially in the bra region, and for men in the underwear region, because these plastics in clothing behave like estrogen in the body. So this can create a foundation for estrogen-based cancers in women, especially in the breasts. And in men, this can affect their fertility levels, the health of their sperm, and the levels of testosterone. So your best option is to just opt for clothing that is natural, things like wool, cotton, and if you've got a little bit of elastic in the waistband, then, then whatever, it's fine. You don't have to be perfect. Number 12, also kind of connected to clothing, is that clean smells neutral. All of these different fabric softeners and deodorants and sprays and cologne and all these things that we put on ourselves are all toxic artificial chemicals. When something is clean, it doesn't smell like anything. Cleanliness is not an odor it's the lack of an odor. I found that by removing many of these things from my life, including fabric softener, deodorant, toothpaste, as I mentioned earlier, I've become far more aware of how toxic these things actually are. If I step into an elevator and somebody's been spraying deodorant in there, I really don't like how it smells and how it makes me feel. And probably the worst part is if these kinds of chemicals were in food, it would be illegal. But these kinds of products are not regulated so strictly. Number 13, learn how money works. I heard a saying, something along the lines of, if you read three books on a subject, you know more than 99% of the population. So if you read just three books about money and how money works, you're gonna be that much further ahead. Probably my favorite book when it comes to money was a book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I found this really, really helpful. He also talks a little bit about trauma and how our trauma and the mindset of our parents and the environment we were brought up in impact how we relate to money and our ability to earn money. He calls it our financial thermostat. So learn about how money works because rich people aren't better than poor people. Poor people aren't worse or better than rich people. They're just different. But if you wanna be somebody that has a lot of money, you need to understand how money works. And the only way you're gonna figure that out is if you start learning. Number 14 is don't use toilet paper. Now this might shock you and you might be thinking, what the hell am I supposed to do if I'm not gonna use toilet paper? The thing is, if you travel to Europe, if you travel to Asia, you'll see that they use bidets everywhere. They've either got a little thing for you to clean yourself or they have a, like literally a hose for your bum. I always think it's funny when you think about these, maybe you could say third world countries and how when I'm there, I feel so much cleaner than I do when I'm in say the United Kingdom, just because my bum's cleaner. So now I always use some form of water to clean my bum. I've got this really cool little thing, I'll put it on the screen. It's called a happy poo. It kind of works like an artificial bidet day and I will use toilet paper to to dry my bum after I'm finished but this is the thing that I hate the most about traveling is when you when you don't have a clean bum and you just use toilet paper it's like that's not clean it's really just not clean also toilet paper is full of chemicals it's really not that good to be putting against your skin and I work with a lot of people with gut problems and toilet paper not really good for your gut definitely not good for your anus so do your bum a favor stop wiping it with toilet paper and clean it with water instead the rest of the world is doing it like that already number 15 is that symptoms are clues so I had a chronic health problem I had many different types of symptoms and and the thing that it really taught me is that every symptom is a clue there's no such thing as a random headache or a random stomach ache or a random pain in your body there's always a very specific reason a lot of the time you'll go to the doctors and they'll say oh it's just allergies or oh it's just this or oh it's just that the only person that this symptom is affecting is you it's affecting your quality of life it's affecting your ability to function and if you just accept that it's going to be there for life or there's nothing you can do about it then that's the outcome that you're going to get but the human body is designed to exist and to live symptom free. We are supposed to be healthy. If you have any kind of chronic symptoms, dig deeper. Number 16, 
don't live with your parents. So this ties in a bit with leave your hometown, but even more so don't live with your parents. If you live in the same environment that you did when you grew up, you're gonna stay stuck in the behavioral patterns that you developed when you were a child. This really connects to that trauma part as well. Sometimes in our family environments, we learn who we have to be to fit into the family and to make the family work. This can include people pleasing behaviors. This can include poor understanding and expression of boundaries. And this can create anxiety and low self-worth and a whole bunch of different problems. And the only way you can break that pattern is by removing yourself from the environment because you just can't see it. We're kind of wired because we've been there since such a young age to push all of these things from our conscious mind into our subconscious and into our body and we just can't see them because to see them would jeopardize our ability to survive in that environment. So the only way to change it is to change the environment. Number 17, a walk solves everything. I really think walking is such an underrated tool. Whether you've got a stomach ache or you're feeling frustrated or you're procrastinating something, if you've got something you can't stop thinking about, if you can't calm down or if you're feeling tired and you need to energize, whatever it is, a walk is almost always a very solid answer. Whenever I'm feeling stuck or stressed or I don't know what to do, I'll just go for a 40 minute walk. And by the time I come back, not only do I feel better, I normally have a tangible plan of what I need to do to move forward. I feel more able to handle my problems. I feel less stressed about them and more able to relax. Also walking is great for your health, physical health, mental health. It moves your lymphatic system. It supports your digestion. It reduces blood sugar spikes from eating. It's one of those things that's so basic. Many people forget about it and don't use it to the maximum ability that they could. Now I'm actually 27 and a half. So I have a half half point in here for you as well. And this little bonus tip is to buy some barefoot shoes. So one of the things I learned is that shoes are shoe shaped, not foot shaped. And wearing shoes all my life caused me some serious problems with my feet, with my knees. And for many people, this causes lower back problems too. The thing is, modern shoes cause your toes to get all crammed together and they stop them from being able to spread out properly, which is how they're supposed to work. Also, modern shoes have lots of cushioning on the heel and this puts the foot into an incorrect position and causes a shrinkage and a reduction of the back of the leg's ability to elongate. Barefoot shoes are basically designed in a way where your toes can spread out and they also have no heel drop which means that your feet are resting flat on the floor with your toes spread out exactly as they're supposed to be. This is a super powerful hack if you have any ankle instability problems, any knee problems, lower back, sciatica, anything like that. It could literally be as simple as you're wearing shoes and shoes aren't designed to be worn on feet. So there's a couple of brands. There's Zero, there's Vivo Barefoot, there's Vibrams. Some of the Vibram ones look really funny. They're like toe socks, but as shoes. You probably will get a couple of weird looks if you wear these to the supermarket, but these are really great like for wearing to the gym, for going walking, for hiking. Barefoot running has become quite an interesting trend recently, but I definitely recommend you have a look at it. It really changed my life. Point number 18 is that hookup culture is toxic. So in the modern world, with modern dating, with dating apps, things like Tinder and Bumble, the average person will see hundreds or even thousands more women than they normally would have had access to. If we go back even like like 100, 200 years, our dating pool would have been people that lived within 30 kilometers of us that we would see like at the market or, or at a party or a wedding or something like that. And having such a large dating pool actually creates a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. It makes you always feel like you could do better and it creates a lot of problems. One of these problems being hookup culture, where as you feel like you have so many options, instead of choosing a person and really trying to make things work with them, you'll just jump around again and again and again. I'm not really sure who this is worse for, men or women. All I can tell you is it is absolutely terrible for both. A lot of men can get hooked on trying to get higher body count, trying to sleep with as many different women as they can because it boosts their ego and makes them feel better about themselves instead of actually developing themselves in a way that is actually meaningful and really truly makes them value themselves by doing something important in the world. And for women, this can lead to all different types of problems like sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancies. The amount of children that are born out of committed long-term relationships is the highest that it has ever been. And I truly do believe that this is one of the reasons it feels like the world is collapsing. I think that modern society has destroyed the nuclear family unit and this causes so many problems. This is children being raised without fathers and this is men without a purpose and it's basically just a lose-lose situation for everyone. So just don't play. Quit the game. Don't do hookup culture. Date for the long term. Try and find someone real and marry them. Number 19, confidence is earned. I've had a lot of problems with confidence. I think most people have problems with confidence in their life at some point. But something I've learned is that confidence is earned. It's not something that you just speak into the mirror over and over again. You don't do the, the affirmations. The way that you build true confidence is you go out and you do hard things and you fail and you fail and you fail until you accomplish something and you say, wow, I achieved something. This gave me confidence. 
I really think that instead of chasing confidence, you get much further if you chase competence instead. So instead of trying to feel more confident, get better, do more, try harder, take on bigger and bigger challenges, have a bigger and bigger positive impact in the world, change people's lives for the better. And as you do this over and over and over again, and you become more competent at it, your confidence will increase. This applies to everything. If this is acting, then act more and more and more, and you will get more confident. If it's singing, same thing. If this is learning sales, do more and more sales calls increase your prices, put more on the line. And the more that people begin to say yes, the more competent you become, the more confident you will feel. So if you're sitting there thinking, why am I not confident? Why am I scared? Why am I anxious? Why is it really hard for me to do all these things? Why is my comfort zone so small? You need to pick a challenge and just attack it and just attack it over and over and over again until you destroy it, until you beat it, and then you will become more confident. Point number two of getting in shape can be really, really helpful here. This is a really nice obstacle to try to attack if you're not really sure what you should be aiming at because, because you will feel a lot more confident if you know you can lift some really heavy weights and you know you've got a solid foundation of a body that works really well. Number 20, and I hope I don't get censored for this, but it's take drugs. So by this, I don't mean go and find a dealer and buy some heroin or some cocaine. What I mean by this is experience altered states of consciousness. Some of the most profoundly healing experiences I've had in my life have been from using medicinal substances like psilocybin, also known as magic mushrooms. I've seen really interesting studies on the impact that psychedelic substances like LSD and psilocybin can have on our neuroplasticity. It literally causes our brains to reform in a different way. It makes neurons connect to different neurons in different ways ways that they weren't able to before. There are many different experiments going all across the world with LSD, with psilocybin, even with things like ketamine at treating anxiety and depression. And the thing is, they're very successful. So I'm not saying jump off the deep end, but maybe this is something you could do a little bit more research about if you feel called to. Number 21, go to therapy. I think our younger generation is more prone to going to therapy. I think there's less shame and stigma attached to it. I find that older people feel a little bit more resistant to it, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. I actually think that being able to go into a space where you're going to look at yourself, you're going to look at your life and you're going to try and work on yourself is literally the bravest thing you can do. I don't know how we can attach shame to something like this. This is the peak of human behavior, the ability to introspect and to change. So I personally don't find things like talk therapy very effective, but what I have found really effective is something called family constellations. So this is a modality where we look at your understanding of how you fit into your family extrapolates as to how you behave in the world and who you believe you are in the world. So if you grew up in a maybe a slightly damaged household, maybe you have a high ACE score, there's a good likelihood that you don't behave the way that you're supposed to behave according to the rules in family constellations. This can often look like trying to be your mum's mum or your mum's father, or trying to be an adult in situations where it doesn't make sense, like being the father of your younger siblings, for example. I've also found somatic experiencing to be really helpful. So this is a body-based therapy modality, where instead of talking, you're feeling into bodily sensations. The thing is your body remembers all the trauma that's ever happened to you. It's all stored in your fascia, in your cells, in your organs. And this modality is really cool because we can follow the wisdom of the body and it can unlock whatever trauma has been held. This one's really, really helpful. If you have a history of trauma, abuse, and neglect, and you have many physical health problems. Number 22 is reduce filler activities. So by this, I mean, if you were to look back on this activity in six months, would you remember it? This is things like binging Netflix shows that you don't even really like, just scrolling mindlessly on TikTok or Instagram or on social media feeds, browsing Reddit or other websites that really bring nothing to your life. I'm not saying never do them. I'm saying become more conscious of when you're doing them and become more aware of the fact that they add absolutely nothing to your life and just try to reduce or remove them as much as possible. Number 23 work harder. For a really long time, I thought I was working really, really hard. And in retrospect, I look back and realize just how much harder I could actually have been working. I think a lot of people feel behind in life or they feel like they, they aren't getting the grades that they want or they're not making the money that they want or their career isn't evolving how they want it to. And they think they're missing like some magic formula or some little key piece of information that's gonna change everything. And maybe this is true, but underneath that, there is this foundation of work your ass off. Now I'm not saying like burn yourself out and make yourself sick and live a life that you hate. But what I'm saying is you need to look at the way that you're living your life and see if it's actually aligned with you achieving the goals that you want to achieve. A big part of this for most people is getting stuck in busy work where we spend a lot of time doing things that make us feel like we're being productive but actually don't help us move closer towards our goals. So for example, if you know you have a test you need to be studying for and you say you're studying but you're actually sitting there just procrastinating, not really doing anything, you end up wasting all of that 
time and you actually get nothing done. You'd be far better off taking 30 minutes to go for a walk, get yourself in the right space and then sit down and do 40 minutes of actual work instead of saying that you studied for two hours and then you actually sat for two hours and did absolutely nothing. Another point here is if you are in a job that you hate or maybe let's say a job that you don't like, maybe you're working a nine to five, maybe you're working in McDonald's or you're stacking shelves in a supermarket or you work as a cashier, maybe you wait tables, maybe you do something that you're just doing it to pay the bills. You'd be surprised how much your life can change if you really put your heart into it, even if you don't love it. You know, it's these kinds of people that get promoted to manager. It's these kinds of people that move on because the thing is life does pass really fast so whatever it is that you're doing whether you like it or not really put your heart into it and it will make all of the difference number 24 two supplement suggestions for you magnesium and probiotics i heard this saying a while back and it was something along the lines of if it's supposed to move and it isn't spray wd-40 if it isn't supposed to move and it is use duct tape and i really feel kind of the same way about magnesium and probiotics i really think that probably 80 or 90 percent of people could solve most of their problems if they would just take a good magnesium supplement and a good probiotic supplement now i don't want to be so reductionist that i say all you need to do to resolve all different types of chronic health problems is take magnesium and probiotics but there's a really good likelihood that many of your problems will be solved with this this can be insomnia this can be headaches cramps including menstrual cramps this can be different types of digestive problems constipation diarrhea arthritis inability to tolerate stress poor recovery from workouts. Honestly, if you haven't tried a magnesium supplement and a good probiotic yet, and these would be my suggestions, then you really should because they have a really high likelihood of helping. Number 25 is demand respect. So by this, I don't mean become an asshole and walk around full of arrogance, expecting everybody to talk to you in a certain way and behave in a certain way. What I mean is if you have relationship dynamics that you don't like and they don't make you feel good, then cut them out. I know this can feel really hard, especially if these are friends you've had for a long time or if they're family members or they're people that you care about or that you love. But the thing is by you staying in a relationship that you know makes you feel bad, you are enabling their behavior and you're telling them that it's okay for them to continue treating you this way. So yeah, this is true in one-off situations like in a restaurant or with strangers in public, but this is most important with your close friends and family. If you have people in your life that make you feel bad about yourself, that make you feel like less of a person, that make you feel like you're not important, then by allowing them to stay in your life, you are agreeing with them. So you need to either stand up for yourself and tell them, this is not acceptable. You cannot treat me this way. And if they don't respect that, cut them out. Number 26, there are no rules. So let me just preface by saying, don't go out and do illegal things. What I am saying here is we often create almost like a prison of rules that we live by in our own heads. We tell ourselves we have to do things certain ways or we have to behave in a certain way or we have to do something a certain way. And it's actually completely untrue you and you can do whatever you want. You can brush your teeth in the shower if you like. You can leave all of your dishes and wash them up in the morning or you can let them accumulate throughout the whole day and wash them up at the end of the day. A lot of the time we pick up rules from other people that we've lived with and then they stick with us and we just stick with them for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Some of the best ways that I've found to get out of this mold and to break the rules that you've built for yourself are to do the things that you do the same way every single day completely differently. So for example, if you go from one place to another and you take the same route every single day, take a different route. Even if you're just walking on the other side of the road, you'll think about things differently. If you wake up and you have the same routine every single day, switch it up, just do it completely different. Even do the same thing just in a different order. Sometimes we build these routines for efficiency and that's great, but sometimes too much efficiency destroys our creativity and then we get stuck and we can feel like we're in a funk. So switch it up and try something different. And remember, there are no rules. 27, maybe you've saved the best till last. Do what you want. A lot of people do what they think society wants them to do, or they do what they think their parents will be proud of them for, or what their wife or their significant other wants them to do. But the thing is, it's your life and you need to do what you want to do. Sometimes you might choose to do something and you get halfway down it and you realize, actually, this was a bad idea. I don't want to do this anymore. And you don't have to. Again, there's no rules. Just stop, just do something different. But these last two points go together really nicely. It's your life and you can do whatever the hell you want with it. If you want to do like I did and say, I don't want a fixed long-term accommodation. I want to travel around the world and work as I do it. Then you can do that. If you want to go and live in the middle of a forest and raise chickens and grow mushrooms, you can do that. If you want to become a really high level entrepreneur and make shitloads of money and have a massive positive impact on other people's lives, you can do that too. There really are no rules and you really can do whatever you want. And if you feel a little bit stuck with that, try implementing some of the other things in the list. Get in shape, travel, learn about your 
trauma, start your own business, develop your skills instead of going after certificates, learn how to communicate in a polarized way, stop living with your parents and start going to therapy instead. Start working harder. You know when you're actually working hard and you know when you're giving it a half-assed effort. I know what it looks like and I know you know what it looks like too. And you might be able to trick everyone around you, but you can't trick yourself. You know if you're being lazy and you know if you're not trying hard enough. So cut out some of those filler activities and try harder and make your life whatever you want it to be because you can do whatever you want. It's your life. I hope you found that interesting. I'd be really interested to hear which of these points was your favorite. Which of these have you taken to heart and are you going to implement in your life? I really thought about this list as I put it together. And I truly believe if you were to implement every single step on this list, your life in one year, I, I could not even imagine how different it would be. As they say, fortune favors the bold. And if you can be bold enough to implement as many changes as I've outlined today, I'm unquestionably sure that fortune will find its way to you. So I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, please let me know. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.